Today, I'm gonna to be talking about retinoids. Retinoids are vitamin A derived molecules and they are one of the best weapons we have in dermatology to fight premature aging as well as acne. There are over the counter versions of retinoids that you can buy, but then there's this whole other world of prescription retinoids and I feel like those don't get talked about a lot. So today I'm going to delve into the topic of prescription retinoids and tell you everything you need to know. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board-certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find skincare products that work for you. I think before you can even begin to understand how a retinoid works, you sort of have to understand what the skin looks like under a microscope. So you have this very top layer called the epidermis that is made of several layers of skin cells, and then below that you have the dermis. Within the epidermis, there's this little very top layer of dead skin cells called the stratum corneum. And when you're using a retinoid, what you're doing is you are signaling the cells in the epidermis, the ones that are many, many layers thick, to start proliferating, so growing and maturing in an organized fashion. So normally you have this bottom layer of cells and they're slowly making their way to the top layer, the outer layer of your skin, and then they sort of get sloughed away. That happens about once every 28 to 30 days but that doesn't always happen in the most organized way. And so what retinoids do is they signal your skin to start maturing these cells in an organized fashion and sloughing them off in the same way. To me, it's like getting all your skin cells on the same page and being like, listen up, we're gonna glow. Now, when you have acne, what happens is you have this hair follicle. So all these itty bitty hair follicles on the face and within them, there are dead skin cells that are also kind of maturing and sloughing off. And when you have acne, what can happen is those skin cells can get very sticky and clump together with the oil that your skin creates called sebum and make this little micro plug. And that micro plug can cause inflammation and then you get the plug plus the inflammation equals acne. So when you use a retinoid, it starts signaling the cells inside your hair follicles to break apart so that they don't form that plug. And it also sends anti-inflammatory signals to the surrounding tissue to say, okay, I saw that you got a plug, but can you please calm down now? It used to be the thinking that retinoids were only good for what we call non-inflammatory or comedonal acne. So that's acne with a lot of texture, but not a lot of redness because they're so good at kind of relieving that micro comedone or that micro plug that happens in the skin. But what we found over time is that retinoids are actually very good for inflammatory acne as well. So really any type of acne that you have, a retinoid is going to be a mainstay in your treatment and really it should be a prescription retinoid. Now, when it comes to anti-aging, retinoids work sort of in a similar way, being anti-inflammatory and making sure that the cells of your top layers of skin are sort of sloughing off in a very normalized way. But what we've also found is that they inhibit certain molecules that exist in the skin that break down collagen and elastin over time. Collagen and elastin is what makes your skin bouncy and stretchy so that when it sags, it bounces right back. You can look at older people who have hanging skin, they've lost the elasticity and they've lost the collagen in their skin. So if you can use a retinoid and inhibit the molecules that normally break down that collagen and elastin, you're gonna be in better shape. The other thing is that we also know that retinoids are collagen stimulatory. So the body, especially after the age of 25, is not so keen on the idea of making new collagen. And that process really slows down in the skin. But if you use a retinoid, you're constantly signaling your skin to make new collagen, keep your skin plump, keep it looking good. Because you're getting that cell turnover, this can also help with things like scarring, pigmentation, dullness. If anyone asks me like, what is the best anti-aging thing I can use for my skin? I mean, besides sunscreen, it's absolutely a retinoid for all of those reasons. Just to be crystal clear, think of retinoids as the word retinoid is an umbrella term and under the category of retinoids, there are numerous different types. There are ones that are available over the counter, things like retinol and retinaldehyde. And then there are prescription strength retinoids and not just prescription strength, but they're actually different molecules. So there are molecules called tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene. Those are all examples of prescription strength retinoids. And the big difference is the ones you can purchase over the counter like retinol, when they are absorbed into the skin, they need to undergo additional conversion steps to reach their active form. Whereas prescription strength retinoids, they're already in their active form. They can go straight in and signal the cell. And so for that reason, they're stronger. They tend to be more effective. 
but they also can cause more side effects. So they can be more irritating, leading to redness and dryness and peeling and all the things people who have tried prescription retinoids and feel like they've failed them feel. What I try to talk to my patients about is that that phase of that peeling and dryness and redness generally doesn't last more than four weeks. Now, four weeks seems like a very long time when you're suffering from peeling and dryness, but most people can get through it. If you can't, if that's not gonna work for you, that's when using an over-the-counter retinoid might be more beneficial, but you have to remember they're not nearly as potent. When you compare retinol over-the-counter to tretinoin prescription, tretinoin is about 20 times stronger. So as long as you have that framework in mind, you're gonna get results from both, but you can think of the timeline as being different and maybe the intensity of the response being different as well. I think what a lot of people don't realize when it comes to prescription retinoids is not only are there multiple types, like I mentioned, tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene, tri ferritine. So those are different molecules, but then there are also different brands of them. So take tretinoin, for example, this is like the OG acne fighter retinoid, as well as the OG anti-aging retinoid. It has multiple brand names. So there's Altrano, Retin-A, Retin-A Micro, Renova. Those are all different brands of tretinoin. And when they're a different brand, that can mean that they're different strengths. So tretinoin goes from prescription strength 0.02% all the way to 0.1%. So the strengths differ, but so does the vehicle that the tretinoin is in. So it can be in a cream, it can be in a lotion, it can be in a gel, it can be in like a microsphere preparation. So different brands will prepare the tretinoin in different ways and in different concentrations because one, Putting it in a different vehicle can change how effective the product is, but it also can change how well tolerated it is. Sometimes creams can feel more hydrating than gels, but some people will prefer a gel preparation because it goes on the skin more smoothly. So if someone isn't going to jive with generic tretinoin, then thinking about a brand name tretinoin product might be worthwhile. One thing you might also be curious about is whether these brand name tretinoin or other prescription retinoid products are more efficacious than their generic counterparts. And really, generally no. Sometimes they can cause less irritation, so if that's going to increase compliance and make someone use their product more because they're less irritated, then I suppose you could say they're more efficacious. But generally speaking, when it comes to brand name versus generic prescription strength retinoids, when you're treating acne, the higher percentages tend to work better for the treatment of acne. But when you're treating photoaging, which is what a lot of my patients are using their prescription retinoids for, low strength often works just as well as high strength. So for example, in a study that compared 0.025% tretinoin, so the lowest strength generic you can get, versus tretinoin 0.1%, so the highest generic you can get, across the board, they had the same like favorable outcomes for the treatment of photoaging. Like their skin overall looked better. Under the microscope, it showed the same reversal of signs of aging, but the higher percentage showed more irritation. So when I'm prescribing tretinoin for the purposes of anti-aging, I tend to recommend lower percent strengths because you get the same outcome with less irritation. Moving on to the other prescription retinoids you have, Tazeratine, which comes in brand name Tazerac, also comes as Araslo. It comes in a foam form, which is generally for the treatment of psoriasis, not for acne, called Fabior. So th again, there's different brand names of Tazeratine. And Tazeratine, I feel like it's regarded as the most powerful retinoid. And it is, it's super powerful. It's the one I would use if someone is having terrible acne breakouts and I feel like their skin isn't going to be too sensitive. Because the other thing to keep in mind about Tazeratine is that it can be quite irritating to the skin, perhaps more irritating than tretinoin or adapalene, so the two other common prescription strength retinoids that we usually use. For demonstration purposes, I have Tazeratine 0.1% cream here. You can see the tube is not that well used because I, I can't really tolerate it. But that's the cream. And then I have a Razlo here, which is Tazeratine, so brand name lotion, 0.045%. I'll put that one there. So the cream, thicker for sure. We know that this cream in studies has proved to be quite irritating for a lot of people, but it's also been proven to be incredibly effective for treating acne as well as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So it has a lot of amazing effects, but the irritation part, if that makes someone unable to use it, it doesn't matter how good it is. And then we have the lotion here, 
brand name, Raslo, and it's just so smooth, so light. It's less irritating than the generic 0.1% cream. So yeah, and the back of this hand is gonna be so smooth. But I think in general, people wanna know, you know, is Tazeratine better than Tretinoin? And I think for acne, it probably is a little bit better. That's what the studies show at the highest concentrations of both. But when it comes to treating photo aging, they've done studies where they've compared to Zeratine 0.1% cream to Tretinoin 0.05% cream, and they performed similarly. So they had the same effects of reversing brown spots, dullness under the microscope, the skin looked better. So I feel like people always want to Zeratine because it's the strongest, but it's not for anti-aging. So you have to follow the data, not the reputation. And just because a product is more irritating, especially with retinoids, it does not mean it's working any better. Now we'll talk about Adapalene. So Adapalene is more commonly known in brand form as Differin, and it exists as point 1% or 0.3%. The 0.1% is actually available over the counter, which is fabulous. And then the 0.3% is prescription. But Adapalene, it's such a great retinoid because it's way more gentle on the skin. So studies show that it causes less irritation than both Tretinoin and Tazeratine. And if you have someone who's really struggling with their acne and has sensitive skin, I will almost always start them on over-the-counter different, over-the-counter Adapalene because I want them to be able to tolerate it and I don't want them to be scared of using retinoids. And truth be told, the data shows that adapalene is very effective for the treatment of acne. So why not start with something more gentle, work your way up, and then maybe move on to tretinoin at some point if you feel like you need more improvement. But honestly, adapalene is so good. This is the one by La Roche-Posay. This is the Effaclar. It's really long too. And this is in like a gel, lightweight gel form. I love Adapalene. I feel like it's one of my favorites for my teenagers to start, or if someone brings in a preteen who's just starting to get those little breakouts, introducing something that I know is not going to be super irritating makes me feel better, it makes the parents feel better, it makes the patients feel more motivated to treat themselves because they're not gonna experience all this redness. Some people will still experience that even with this. It is still prescription strength, even though it's over the counter now. But Adapalene is one of my faves and it's so good. And then last but not least, when it comes to prescription topical retinoids, we have, <laughs> this too, I just feel ridiculous holding this up, Acleaf. This is Triferritine Cream, it's 0.005%. So this is, it's like a little gel. And this is also proven to help with facial acne, but it's also FDA approved for the treatment of truncal acne, so acne on the chest and back. Frankly, I would feel fine using Tretinoin, Tazeratine, Adapalene on the trunk as well, but this is the one that's FDA approved for that. And there is no generic form of that. Maybe that will come in the future. To be perfectly honest, I do not prescribe a lot of brand name retinoid products. And, and really the reason for that is cost. They tend to be incredibly expensive and I don't think they're often needed to get the results you want. There is this subset of people who will not be able to tolerate a generic retinoid, but will be able to tolerate a brand name. And for them, we'll go for it, but we'll try the generic first. But in general, that is my philosophy. So let's say you've been given a prescription retinoid and you're like, great, how do I use this without getting a ton of irritation and getting super discouraged? One, understand that even if you do all the things I'm about to talk about, you might have some irritation and that's okay. You're trying to normalize the way your skin cells are maturing and turning over. And while they're getting organized, they get disorganized first. And so that first few weeks of your cells being disorganized, that's when you're gonna see the largest amount of like peeling, flaking and redness, just general irritation. But what can you do? So one, you wanna apply your retinoids to dry skin. When you apply it to wet skin, oftentimes you'll get more irritation. So if you can pat your skin dry, let it sit for 10 minutes before putting on your retinoid, that's generally the way to go. Another thing you wanna think about is putting it on over a moisturizer. And people might go like, oh, over the moisturizer, is that gonna block it from penetrating? And maybe a little bit, but not in a significant way. So you'd put your moisturizer on, you'd wait like 10 minutes, and then you would go in with your prescription retinoid. You don't have to do it that way, but if you're really prone to irritation or you would classify your skin as sensitive, that can be incredibly helpful. And then the other thing is really not going in every single day from the get-go. I usually recommend my patients start twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays, 
If they can do it twice a week, then we move up to three times a week or every other day. And over the course of many weeks, we work up to every single day, but that is not a fast process. And if you expect to be able to go from zero to 60, your irritation is gonna go from zero to 60 as well. So those are my biggest tips is over a moisturizer, start slow. I always start with a low percentage, applying it to dry skin. Here's the deal. Tretinoin and Tazeratine have many studies to show that they are both effective for the treatment of acne, as well as many different types of photoaging and hyperpigmentation. So if someone's coming to me with photoaging or pigmentation concerns, I generally will choose Tretinoin, mostly because it's less irritating than Tazeratine. But if they're not getting enough oomph with their Tretinoin and they really wanna try Tazeratine, that's when I will prescribe Tazeratine for that. When it comes to acne, I almost always start with Adapalene. Why? It's, it's shown to be really effective and it's less irritating, so why not start there? We can always move on. A lot of times by the time someone's seen me in my office, they've already given over-the-counter Adapalene a good trial run and so they're ready for something different, but I almost always start with Adapalene for the treatment of acne. Tretinoin should be used at night. It is unstable when exposed to UV light, and so I generally say use it at night. Yes, some of the brands say that you can use it during the day, but just so you don't have to worry about it, if it's tretinoin, use it in the evening. When it comes to tazeratine and adapalene, these are photostable molecules, meaning that the exposure to UV light doesn't break them down or make them less effective. So you could put them on in the morning or use them in the evening as well. Another thing people often want to know is whether or not retinoids make you more sensitive to the sun. And there's actually some debate in the literature about this. Some people think you initially are sun sensitive and then after a few months of use, you lose that photosensitivity. But just to be safe, I always recommend that when you're using a retinoid, or really just always, you should be wearing a sunscreen during the day and sun protecting. So it doesn't really matter, protect yourself. So that is your introduction to prescription retinoids. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. I would love to answer your retinoid questions. You can also follow me on Instagram at Dr. Samantha Ellis. I talk about retinoids, but I talk about all things, derm and skin and procedures. So if you're interested in that, we can hang out there. I think I'm supposed to say like and subscribe. So please do, and I'll see you on my next video. Take care.